Okay, let's look at how to digitize the lady with the hat as an embroidery. Now in the first part of this series, which I'll link below, and part two is the applique, I'll link that below as well. But in part one, I said that this design, because it's got large areas of stitching, wasn't really suitable to be stitched at 200 millimeters high. I probably should have elaborated on that a bit more because it is possible but you would need to apply extra underlay and you'd need to test sew it which means that um, you're going to use an awful lot of thread test sewing it and then maybe even then have to adjust with reshaping in order to get the outlines to line up with the objects because of the large area with lots of pull. If I open Fenny's design, which was this one, and we go to down to the bottom here, we can see how many stitches. There are 52,148 stitches in there and just to find out how long it's going to take to stitch out, this is at the 200 millimeters high roughly, um, we can go to our print preview and provided we've got in our options to show the runtime, so you can go to your options and choose what you're going to show in the print preview. So if I go to the next page, I actually checked to put the runtime. It's going to take one hour and 13 minutes and 50, uh, sorry, yeah, one hour, 13 minutes and 55 seconds to stitch this out. And if you you really need to stitch the whole thing to see where the problems are going to be. So there's a lot of thread, a lot of time to stitch it out. So that's why I suggested do it as an applique. You're going to have much more chance of success. However, as I said, it can be possible. There are a couple of things to consider if you're going to embroider it that large. Let me just close this off again now. The pull on the fabric will vary depending on the size of the area you're stitching. The larger the area, the more pull you will get. You can reduce the amount of pull in a couple of ways. One is to set the fabric type before you start and this is a big advantage when you digitize for yourself because you know what fabric you're stitching on. So there are options to set the fabric type in um, the menus up here. So if we go click on design you've got an option here called fabric. Now, if there's no checkbox in there, no fabric has been applied and also down the bottom here, there's nothing right down the bottom here saying what fabric is being used for the design. If you want to apply a particular fabric, you need to check this box and then you can drop down this menu and choose which fabric you want. There is um, several choices here. You can also make a custom fabric type and I have a video on this choosing your fabric type and and I'll link to that below as well. Um, most designs you buy will just be done on the generic type fabric so that's why being able to digitize for your own fabric and in your, and digitize your own designs is a big advantage because you can adjust all these settings to get a better stitch out. So if I was to choose a woven medium weight I would get certain settings in the stitch density, stitch lengths, stitch spacing, um, and the underlay would be um, done, you know, slightly differently depending on the fabric type I choose here. 
I'll show you in a minute in the manual where they've got a chart showing you what those settings are that you get by choosing the fabric. And the required stabilizers, um, it's telling you what they, that they recommend as a stabilizer. So in this case, they're recommending to put a, uh, well, they're not recommending a topping because you don't need one, but for the backing to use poly mesh or cutaway times two. So two layers. So that's another thing that affects the amount of pull is the type of stabilizer you're using. So the fabric type and the stabilizer. So I'm just going to cancel out of that because I don't want to change Fenny's um, design. But I'll just bring up that part of the manual. So here we are in the manual and I've gone under properties, fabrics and templates in the index and I've expanded that out by clicking on the arrow here and then there's a section called working with fabrics and if you expand that out you can go to manage fabrics and I've probably gone a page different but it starts on page 239 so that's a good place to start to help you get um, a better finish on your embroidery. You can also manually make settings and as I said you can make a custom fabric once you've tested on a fabric and you find that you need certain settings for that fabric. For embroidery you can set up um, a custom fabric to apply every time you're going to embroider to sew on that sort of fabric. Okay let me just minimize that now. So to set your settings manually for your underlay and stitch types and so forth you do that in the object properties. You can do it prior to digitizing your objects or you can do it after. So if you want to do it prior like um, you're going to digitize a lot of objects with the same settings then you can um, just right click on any of your fills, for instance the step fill and you can set your stitch spacing and length here so stitch spacing will um, be the distance between, you can see the little arrows here when I hover over the amount, is the distance between the rows of stitching so the bigger the number the less dense it will be, the smaller the number the more dense. You don't want to go too extreme otherwise you're going to have, uh, especially um, making the, it more dense because you can be too dense and you will distort the fabric, um, you'll put too much thread going through the fabric and it can end up very stiff and lumpy and even break thread. But certainly you can open up the density by increasing that number your stitch length can be adjusted slightly as well so if you want to have a slightly shorter stitch or a slightly longer stitch you can change that there. As I said don't go too extreme and you know experiment with some little stitch outs on some t test fabric and you can even use a very small hoop to do your test sews of the different densities and stitch lengths to see what happens. Your step patterns down here you've got 30 to choose from so um, I've talked about this before in the part one um, have an experiment with the different stitches. If you want to change the underlay that's under effect so you click on the effects button down the bottom here and you'll see the default underlay for, and that will be different slightly if you have chosen a different fabric and, and applied that fabric to your design but you have a stitch length there and a stitch spacing there for the underlay and they can be adjusted too so you can have longer stitches in your underlay, shorter stitches in your underlay, you can space your underlay more densely or more sparsely and the margin from the edge of the actual um, object so the underlay doesn't go all the way to the edge usually but um, you can have a wide margin, a medium margin or the normal margin so you can experiment with those too and just see what it looks like by going in out of true view and creating some objects, go out of true view, create some with the wide, some with the medium and you'll see the differences. This is where you would apply a second underlay so if you're, if you're digitizing a very large object it's advisable to have two underlays and they will go in opposite directions to each other so you can set 
the type here. So you need to put a checkbox here first and you can set the type of underlay. You can have them both the same. They can both be step underlays with the same settings or you can have them as different types of underlay. There's center walk, double step, double zigzag, edge walk, step and zigzag. So you've got lots of options there to lay down a foundation for your embroidery object. Um, there's all sorts of other options here too, but we won't go into those just here. Now I'll just cancel out of that. And so if I had didn't think to do that before I started, then I would apply it after the fact. So if I selected this object here, um, this is a fancy fill, elastic fancy fill. So if I right click on it and go to object properties, it won't be shown here in the, there's no elastic fancy fill in here. You have to go to the effects and there's an elastic fancy fill tab there and you can make all your adjustments here. If you want to do that prior to creating the elastic fancy fill, I'll just close that, you can click on the elastic fancy fill um, icon down here and that dialog will automatically open and you can make all your adjustments there and there's quite a few things you can change and you can change the pattern of the elastic fancy fill in here. Okay, so without further ado I'm going to go back to my embroidered design. I'm not going to spend the whole video clicking around every object so I'm just going to analyze how I digitized it. Hopefully you've watched part two about the applique because that talks about the order of digitizing and some pathing, putting paths in from one object to another and the same applies when you're doing embroidery. So if I close that design now, here I am back at my embroidered design. I'm just going to take that grid off so it's not confusing. So I've done this at about 10 centimeters high but you know if you want to go a bit bigger go a bit bigger but as I said take all those things into consideration about your stabilizer and your um, underlays etc and of course the more stabilizer you use and the more underlay you use the stiffer the design is going to be so large designs will be stiffer so you need to consider what sort of project you're putting them on so if you're putting them on a bag that doesn't that's got a stiff outer sh shape anyway and you and you don't mind it being stiff then that's fine but if you want to put it on a draping piece of clothing then a full solid embroidery is not the best option okay so let's have a look at this design step by step. The first object I digitized and we can see in the color film here is this red one um, which is the inner part of the hat and I actually did that as an elastic fancy fill but you don't have to you could do it as just a step fill you could do it as one of the options in the step fill it's entirely up to you but that is the bottom object it's underneath everything else and as I said in the applique video you need to think about that as you're digitizing work from the bottom up stitch the things that are on the underneath first um, if you don't get them quite right you can change the order in the color film later but you will need to probably um, reapply the closest join in the edit toolbox. Um, you can re, uh, reapply the closest join which will move your start and end points back to logical positions once you've moved things around. Um, but sometimes you still have to manually go in and move a few start and end points and of course your pathing will um, need to be put in the right order as well. This object didn't need any paths anywhere because the next object to stitch was a different color. I couldn't go from this red to the collar for instance because the collar is on top of the of the face and I couldn't go from this red to the sash because the sash is on top of the hat and the hat's got to come before that. So the next object was the face so it's just a matter of left and right clicks. Let me go out of true view to show you that I did actually go around the mouth not under it so let me just go out of true view and you can see the object because I've got it selected go pink and so it's very clear that I have um, got um, that digitized 
around the mouth so that I haven't got two layers of stitching there in the mouth part. Now the other thing you might notice is I've got quite a bit of overlap here between the objects. I like to digitize with overlap where I can because and particularly if you're going for a larger object if you overlap when you digitize you'll if you reduce the amount of chance of getting a gap it's it's over insuring probably but you're not just relying on the pull compensation the pull compensation works in the direction of the stitches but there's no extra added on the width so this side here won't have extra added only where these stitches point like this and in the red case the length is added this way so if, um, you can see that I've selected this object and I have my outline showing and you can see that the outline of this object is running very close to the point but the points are um, extending past it and that is the pull compensation applied by the software and when you're doing manual digitizing the default is 0.2 so you can increase that to 0.4 if you want to um, but because I've overlapped the objects I didn't feel there was a need um, but until you test so you don't know for sure how this is going to behave because everybody's fabric is going to be slightly different the type of weave the weight of the fabric everybody's stabilizer is going to be different and every design will be different in that the shape and size of the objects and the angle of the stitching um, will affect the embroidery differently but putting in some insurance like a little bit of overlap is a good idea if I bring the image back we can see here that this line here um, has got some width to it so I use that to my advantage when digitizing and so I digitized to the opposite side of the line for each object so this part of the face I digitized to that side of the line rather than going through the middle and then hoping that when I go through the middle for this part of the hat that they will abut um, so that's been helpful if you didn't have an image with a thick line like that then you would you could create objects by let's go to digitize and digitize a couple of objects so if I had um, a closed object here enter okay now that's gone in black so I'll do the next one in red so it's obvious um, I'm going to show my outlines and you can see here actually that the outline is right on the edge of the stitching here because that's not the direction of the stitching this is the underlay these lines here the direction of the stitching is going at the default 45 degree angle so the points of the stitching extend in that direction past the outline so there's your indicator and this is a point where you would probably digitize your second object with the um, being out of true view so that you can see where your first object was digitized along here so I'm going to get my second object which will be a closed object as well but I'm going to choose the color red and I'm going to digitize that and when I get to this side of the object I'm going to cross over that outline so if you haven't got your outline showing you can show your outlines with the button up the top there um, but cross over it just a little bit and digitize like so oh. and I'll oh, backspace because I used a curve node there I better use a left click get a square node and click out and let's just say it's a little object here enter so now you can see that in addition to the um, pull compensation where it's extending past that line into out to here I've also got this width of, of the overlap that I just created and you can use your grid to get some sort of idea of scale of that so if I bring my grid in uh, the grid is only one centimeter square so that is a lot less than a millimeter across probably uh, if um, if it's a millimeter so let's just check it as well with the view measure so up here you've got view measure you can actually 
left click on one side go across to the other side and it'll tell you it's only 0.25 of a millimeter but it just gives you that bit of insurance escape and escape to get rid of that tool and I'll select I'll just undo to get rid of both those objects okay so back to the design and back to the color film so the next thing I digitized because it goes under the hat was the necklace and I used the candle wick now I'll select that and go to the object properties and I need an outline stitch there it is candle wick border I used the three millimeter candle wick once I've got my necklace in then I can do the collar. Now the collar is made up of two pieces, two separate objects. So it looks like one now because I'm in color blocks mode. But if I go into individual ob objects, you can see that this is the first half of the collar and this is the second half of the collar. Even though they more or less cross over down here, it's better to have them as two separate objects because then you can control the angle of the stitching for instance in and it can be different in both collars. So if I go to this collar here, I actually use the angle of the stitching to create some definition. I'll go back to true view for a minute. So I've got um, just the normal step fill but I added angles so if I go to the reshape tool you can see I've got angles in here curving that stitching around another option would be um, let's just go out of that it would be to apply the wave effect and if you go to the reshape tool while you've got the wave effect you can actually curve that stitching around the collar by creating your wave in the shape of the collar. I've just got these on top of each other at the moment so I'll just try and move that down and I'll probably bring I might even put another node in there so I can get more of a curve at the top. There we go. So that's another option select and click off and I'll actually zoom into that where you've got the stitching following the collar that will give it some definition too um, you could also use one of the other step fills as Fenny did so if I select it again and go to the object properties and fill stitch and choose 26 which was the one Fenny did and apply that even though this looks different to what Finney did too because I've got the wave effect applied as well. So if I didn't have the wave effect, um, I'll just take that off. Uh, I, that is now just being affected by the different angles I had. If I take out the stitch angles, you will just get the 45 degree angle and then you could go to the reshape tool and you could make that horizontal if you wanted. So there are so many options of how you fill your objects. I'm just going to undo all the way back out of the wave fill. That's Yes, that's how I had it. I quite like the wave fill though, I might go back to that later. Um, and same with the other. So click around your object. As I said, you can set up your parameters first or you can play around with them after as far as the fill type and stitch angles and so forth. So I did this part of the collar first because it's under that part. And I continued on with my overlapping and the other reason for overlapping you'll see later when we start to do the um, outline. So then the next part is the second part of the collar because that's on top of this part of the collar and under the hat. Then I've got the brim of the hat. Now that's elastic fancy fill as well so you can set that up beforehand here or you can do it later in the um, effects under object properties then th the brim of the hat so in the case of these two collar pieces I didn't need a path because they are butted and the software does apply closest join as you digitize so if you digitize this object 
the left hand collar and then digitize that object straight after it uh, provided you don't move them in the color film afterwards they will just move the start and end points to the logical place so that there is no tie offs so if I go out of true view and I'm showing connectors I'll just take those outlines off so there is a start here and this is an end it might be easier to see the connectors sometimes get confusing because they're the end of that could have been the end of this that triangle could have been the end of the face so I'll just select this object and go to the reshape and you can see it starts and ends down here so it probably starts here and does the underlay up to the top and then stitches the the cover stitch over down to the bottom and then if I tab in theory the start of this side of the collar should be here where this one ends so I'll just tab and sure enough there's my green tri triangle so it's starting there so there's no tie-ins and tie-offs there but with the two hat pieces there's a gap between them so it has to tie in and tie off so this is where you could put a path now I did I think so let's go down no I haven't put my path in yet so because I forgot to put my path in I have got a tie off let's select this part of the hat and go to the reshape tool and where is it starting it's starting and ending here I would actually like that to end up here so I can just path across to this part of the hat so I will change that first so I'm going to try and get the red cross what have I got no the green triangle let's get the red cross this time no that's a node I'll just undo that so that it's not moved where's my red cross now there it jumped there we go finish that one there ah oh, well that could finish there so I can put the start back there because I can go across here so I'm going to get my get my digitizing in the right order by I'll hide that image and I will go to the tulip and I want to go I'm pretty close to the end of the design so I'm going to go back object by object till I get to there or actually color so I, because after that black part of the hat there is the outline the lips the red and then the black so I'll go back till I get to the black so we'll go color by color back 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 so that's the outline the lips and the sash now I'm at this part of the hat and you can see my white cross is up here and so now I need to go back one object so I'll jump by object back one and I'm now at the end here's my white cross of the brim of the hat so now I can digitize my path so that um, so I need to go to the digitize toolbox get an open object and so because I've used the travel toolbar it will land here between the two objects in the color film and the stitch order so we've got black we've got a single run and an open object so all we need to do is there is the jump stitch you can see it dotted across there and so this is where the other part of the hat starts where this circle is here so all I need to do is left click here and left click on the circle and enter and that's got rid of that jump stitch got rid of those tie-ins and tie-outs and added the path here between the two black objects okay size to fit and I don't think there's any other paths I need to do so oh there might be some in the scarf so let's go forward one object so that stitched the other part of the hat and it's ended up here the next object I digitized was this part of the sash because that's underneath the knot and these two are as well I wanted to digitize this part of the sash then that bottom part of the sash then this one and then the knot so if I go forward one object that's that object digitized now because the knot is on top I just want a path across here to this object here which is the 
bottom part of the sash. So I again get my open object but this time make sure I'm red which I am and left click on my white cross and left click on the circle of the start of this object and enter. That's got rid of that jump stitch. It will continue on and stitch this side of the sash because it abuts another red object and I digitize them in the correct order there is no jump stitch between these two objects and because I digitized the knot next the software sorted that out as well so there's no need to worry about any pathing for here. Then of course there's nothing I can do because the lips are a different colour, they're pink unless I made the lips red but even then they're way over here there's no way I can path to that object underneath anything else so that I can't do anything about that. So let's go back into true view and let's actually before I do that go back out of true view I'll just go to the end of the design so click on the tulip and press the travel forward and that will take you all the way to the end of the design. We'll go into true view. Now the next object I created was the outline and I'm just going to select that um, and I'm actually going to delete it to show you how to make the outline. So I'll right click and delete it. Okay so once you've got all your objects digitized and you've overlapped them a little bit everywhere so you've got no gaps at all between the objects then you're ready to create your outline and the tool for the outlines and offsets is in the edit toolbox. You need to select the design to, for it to become available. Let's just go one to one and then I can just select the whole design so it's all selected. I might just remove the grid again. When the whole design is selected the outlines and offsets tool becomes available. So we're going to click on that and I'll just move it to the side. We're not going to offset the outline so don't put a tick in that box. Just worry about the object outlines for this instance and I do have a video on this that goes into it in great detail but I'll cover it again here. Um, we want a single run we want the black color and then it's this you've got these options about overlapping objects so if you hover over them they'll describe what it does so the first option will give you individual outlines so every object even if it crosses over another object will be outlined that will result in multiple outlines where you've got two objects next to each other even though they're overlapped so you don't want that option in this case the next option um, will trim any intersecting outlines so you will basically just get an outline around the outside because wherever it crosses over into another object it will trim off the outline. So we don't want that one either because we want some definition around the lips and mm, I've selected the necklace and I didn't have the necklace when I did the outlines before. It'll be interesting to see what happens. The third option is trimmed outlines. So where two objects cross over each other, it will only stitch one outline. It will trim off the other one. So this is why I did that slight overlap. And as well, this is another reason why I did the slight overlap because this makes outlining it with this tool so much easier. So if I select that op option and go OK, it will take a little while to work it all out so just wait patiently while the little clock ticks and I think it's going to take even longer because it might do something around the did it do anything around the no it didn't good it didn't ah oh, because that's an open object the necklace so even though that was selected it didn't take that into account because it only can outline closed objects of course but if you look closely here now we've just got one outline there is it's a good idea to check because there is a bit of a gap here let me just go select the outline I'll go to color blocks uh, no I'll try and find that I'll just see if I can select it here that looks like it yes so I'm going to go to the reshape tool and even though it's actually digitized it to there, it's not stitched it to there. Let's go out of true view. 
and yes it stopped stitching there even though the line went to there so sometimes you'll get little issues like that my advice then is to just move the end node slightly till you get it to create another stitch doesn't seem to want to do it ah I've got two nodes there let me just take that node over ah it was okay a minute ago now it's stitching up to here which is pretty close um, the other one's coming around here so I want to go a little bit further no the further I go the worse it gets let me just let me just delete that node see if getting it to, yes and get it down to one node so sometimes you just have to play a little bit now I want to move that node down a bit it was that extra node that caused the problem all right now I'll go back into true view and that's good that's closed that off so just go around your outline and make sure it's all is one now the outlines are stitching in a funny way it's created all the outlines but some of them let's just see how it stitches we'll go to our stitch player and we'll just pause that for a minute because I don't want you to have to watch all of that stitch out but we'll get to the outline so that's just at the end of the pink so what I'm doing is dragging that little box along till I get to the end of the pink and I'll just go back back there we go and start the player I'm going to make it a bit slower so I can see what's going on play oh that's the pink finishing off so it's going to start here and stitch this outline first I can see it going there where did it go next it's a bit hard to see with the black hat ah you see it's jumped down to the face and now it's jumped over here so that's going to result in a lot of jump stitches all of these outlines should be connected in one way or another so the best idea to stop that happening is just stop that stitch player everything will come back I'll go to color blocks mode and I'll select that object and then I will go into edit blackwork run so it will be a double outline but it will save a lot of jump stitches before I do that I'll just go out of true view to show you all those jump stitches happening let's click off so, so you've got a black jump stitch here um, you've got a black jump stitch there you've got another black jump stitch there so there's quite a few jump stitches around for those outlines so let's select all those outlines and you can see them now they're hot pink because I selected them um, we'll apply blackwork run we need to enter an entry point I'm going to enter an entry point here because that's going to be I think the less obvious um, point of starting it's not going to show so much and now a lot of those jump stitches went this one is I'll just see if I got rid of them all so if I go to individual objects and go down yes there that's all one object now so I'll just go back to true view that would be how to digitize the embroidery I didn't mention that this was elastic fancy feel either and it was a different pattern um, Finney used let's just select that right click on it go to object properties and effects I used the 021 circle number 90 but Finney used a different one she used the 057 ring so you can drop that down there these are in numerical order so you can find that one and apply let's just see what that looks like it's a much bigger pattern so you would have to fiddle around I think I also fiddled around with my sizing for the circle as well so the spacing on this is 12 and um, 
the row spacing and the column spacing is 12 and the X and Y is the size of the pattern so is 12 I would make that probably 6 Harvard and make that 6 and of course your spacing and you can see here your spacing and your column should be 6 as well and so that they keep the same closed in pattern and apply that so that yes so that's the difference there's not a lot of difference between Finney's and mine so I must have changed my sizing and spacing as well there is a slight difference between the pattern but um, you can do all that in a fancy feel the diamond pattern is just the default fancy feel so that would be the top one here I've got nothing selected so it's not going to change anything but if you want to use that one that's that that diamond pattern on the hat it's the 001 which is the, the default pattern for elastic fancy feel if you've got any questions put them below and I'll see you in the next video which is going to be another quilting stitch video thank you